Hey everyone, uh, my name is Rhys Compton. I studied a bachelor's in software engineering at the University of Waikato, and I'm one of the authors of Embedding Java Classes with Code to Vec Improvements from Variable Obfuscation. So I'll start off by kind of introducing the problem space. So this, the topic this research pertains to is how to represent source code in a form suitable for machine learning. So extensive code data sets are available, uh, for example, all through GitHub, and these are suitable for machine learning. However, machine learning requires a numeric input. So we want a way to convert code into a numeric form, for example, a vector of real numbers. And this form should contain the essence or the semantics of the code and can then be used for machine learning quite easily. So, enter code to vec So code to vec is a recently published approach to learn code embeddings. Uh, so the authors trained neural network on the task of predicting the name of a method given the code inside. Uh, they did this as it's somewhat of a proxy for sort of code semantics. And I'd highly recommend you to visit their website. They've got some great demos on there. So how does code to vec represent code, you might ask? So the method first converts source code into an abstract syntax tree, which contains the sort of raw functionality of the code. Uh, the method then enumerates all paths between nodes on the tree and combines them. One of the key parts is that it learns to focus on certain paths that are highly predictive, weighting them more. It uses this weighted combination to create a single vector representing the code snippet, what we'll call the code vector, and the model then uses this for prediction on the surrogate task used to train the model, which is method name prediction. The loss from this is back propagated through the model to learn the embeddings. So that's all great. The model became state of the art for method name prediction. However, one limitation is that the model is reliant on variable names. So the attention mechanism, which gave it such good ability to detect minor changes in the code also led it to overfit to variable names. And these became the core focus of the model rather than the structure of the code. So this is problematic as anyone who's worked with others know everyone sort of names things differently. Um, and this is a somewhat common problem in machine learning where models exploit biases in the training data because that gives the best performance in a specific narrow task. Um, this is recently coined as shortcut learning. So here are some examples and you can actually try these on their website. Uh, the first example is a method looping until something is done. The model correctly predicts done or is done as the method name. However, if we commit a typo from done to don, uh, the predictions become wildly incorrect and in fact more confident in their incorrectness. Another example with factorial, um, the model correctly predicts the method name, which is great. However, when we change n to total, the predictions change drastically and again are more confident in their incorrectness. So these aren't even difficult adversarial examples. You'd quite reasonably see them in a code base. But more importantly, I think it should be noted that similar behavior could occur on code where variable names aren't even trustworthy, for example, malware. So this is a problem that the original authors also observed, um, and it leads us to the first research question, which is, will hiding variable names improve code to vex understanding of code semantics? The other limitation uh, that we found is that the model can only embed a single method, so we can't create whole class embeddings which is maybe useful for classifying malicious Java classes. This leads us to the second research question, which is how should code to vec method embeddings be combined to accurately describe an entire Java class? So onto the method. Um, the first thing we did was hide variable names during training of a code to vec model. Um, some of the other constructs are still visible, things like method names, constant values. Um, and this is with the goal to, of forcing the model to learn more from the code structure. 
So starting with the original code, we applied type obfuscation, where we change names of variables to reflect their type and scope, what we'll call partial information. Then we also applied random obfuscation, where we completely scrambled all names, what we can call no information. Uh, and through both of these, we maintained the code's correctness. We then passed this newly obfuscated data through an untrained code to vec model to acquire a new obfuscated code to vec model. So as for the second question around combining method embeddings for an entire class, we used an aggregation pipeline. So for a Java source code data set, we take each file and split it into its composing methods. We then pass each through the previously trained code to vec model and a fixed length vector is returned. So we're essentially using the code to vec model as a feature extractor on the individual methods. We then need to combine these individual method embeddings, which is done in the aggregation method. So this is fairly simple. Um, it takes in a set of embeddings and applies a simple mathematical operation to aggregate them into a single vector which represents the entire Java class, what we can call a class embedding. We can then apply the category of the original Java class to this transformed version of it for every file, creating a numeric data set which can be treated like any numeric data set in machine learning. We evaluate it with a simple linear classifier and we can use that as a proxy for the embedding quality. So this can be used to, for example, compare the standard to the obfuscated embeddings. If the obfuscated embeddings create a data set with a higher resulting accuracy than the standard ones, we can say the model has been improved by obfuscation. So we wanted to test these different code to models over a range of areas. So we collated seven data sets. Um, these cover a wide range of areas from algorithm classification to bug detection and author attribution. Uh, and these are all available on the um, project repository. So onto the experiments we performed. So we wanted to know how best to aggregate method embeddings to represent an entire Java class. So we scored each aggregation method based on the resulting accuracy of the linear classifier. Higher score means the embeddings created with this aggregation method could be more accurately classified. And this was done over all data sets. So we found that there wasn't sort of one obvious best aggregation method. As you can see, mean got first equal for scoring and also appeared in many of the tuple aggregations, indicating it's a fairly strong aggregation function. Now we come to the meat of the results, the comparison between the obfuscated and non-obfuscated models. It's easy to get confused as to what these results show, so I'll emphasize it. Um, so this table shows the accuracy of the simple linear support vector machine classifier on data sets created by code to vec embedding models. In other words, we use the obfuscated or non-obfuscated Kotovic model as a feature extractor and then fit an SVM to the resulting features. Uh, the accuracy is what's shown here. Um, a green red cell indicates a statistically significant increase or decrease in performance compared to the baseline, which is no obfuscation. I should also mention that this table shows kappa and not percent accuracy. Uh, this is done as kappa is a fairer comparison between different data sets. So 50% accuracy on a two class data set is not comparable to 50% accuracy on an 11 class data set, which we have here. However, kappa will reflect this difference. <coughs> so on the whole, uh, embeddings from an obfuscated code to vec model are usually more accurate. Uh, or at least seldom less accurate. So for four of the seven data sets, the performance was statistically significantly improved by random obfuscation. The improvement is most prominent in cases where 
code semantics uh, is useful for classification, indicating that the obfuscated Kotovec model does actually learn uh, a better model of code semantics. <coughs> so the um, first data set we did here, OpenCV Spring, was a fairly trivial test data set to see how the embedding models would perform on a simple task. All three models were pretty accurate, although the randomly obfuscated embeddings were the most informative. So shown here is a T-SNE visualization of the embeddings in this data set. Uh, there's links on this project repository to an interactive version you can play around with. So we can see very nice separation between the two categories, which explains the strong performance across the board. So you may have noticed the red down the bottom, and I do want to talk about that because it highlights the limitations both of the variable obfuscation methods we did, but also the training objective of code to vec So author attribution performed notably worse. Uh, both overall, but specifically with the obfuscated models. Um, so this T-SNE visualization here shows pretty terrible separation between the categories. Um, to explain this, it's important to remember the original code to vec training goal. So if two functions are doing the same task, the model is trained to ignore the author-specific subtleties and predict the same method name for both methods. The other point to note is that for predicting authors based on the code, variable names are highly predictive. They're the most obvious way to delineate between programmers. So understandably, hiding them makes the embeddings worse. Cool, so on to the conclusion. To answer the question around combining method embeddings, we've found that performing a simple mean of the vectors works fairly well. Uh, you're unlikely to get significantly bad results when combining Kotovec embeddings like this. Um, we also found there's no clear evidence to suggest that concatenating embeddings improves their accuracy. The more important question pertains to Kotovec and whether it should be trained on obfuscated code. And the answer that we've concluded with is yes, in most cases. So, when training a code to vec model on obfuscated data, we saw little to no degradation uh, from the resulting embeddings, and in fact saw genuine improvements in many tasks, such as algorithm classification and duplicate detection, so tasks where code semantics are actually important. The one caveat to this is author attribution, as previously mentioned. So, to wrap things up, I'd like to talk about the bigger picture. Um, bias in training data happens in all areas of machine learning, so care must be taken to understand this bias. Uh, we provided evidence to suggest that obfuscating variable names on Kotovec training data can result in a more robust model by limiting its ability to overfit to variable names. Uh, this is potentially a form of regularization as it completely removes the potential of the model to overfit to variable names forcing it to rely on method names, literals, and the code structure. In most cases, this will provide an improvement for the model. So, in summary, for tasks where variable names are crucial, such as author attribution, Kotovec should be trained with variable names. Uh, it should be noted again that Kotovec's current training task is unsuitable for code author attribution, as previously mentioned. However, for the general case, code to embeddings can be improved by obfuscating code that they're trained on, and so this should be done. Thanks for watching.